Kelly Rigsby, busy mom, fat loss expert, and author of Fit Yummy Mummy, which is celebrating a seven-year anniversary. Wow, time has flown. I just want to say thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being a loyal follower and supporter for what FYM stands for. Been transforming busy moms and busy women's lives and bodies all around the globe. So it's really, truly amazing when I st take a step back and reflect upon that impact. So all this week, I'm celebrating by creating bonus videos for you based on your requests, just as a way, to, a small way to say thank you. Uh, today's video, I'm going to be showing you low impact, but high intensity moves that you can use for your interval training workout. Today, I'm gonna start off with, and you're gonna be like, what? The first move I'm gonna show you is a burpee variation. There are three different ways that you can do burpees that are low impact, and you'll be like, ah, uh, maybe I do love burpees. Let me show you what I mean. Very basically, you can break down the burpee and eliminate the jumps completely. This is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna squat down, place your palms on the mat, walk one foot out at a time, one foot in, Very basic, but just the simple fact of putting your body into that range of motion, throwing your arms up overhead, going back down into it, and going at a pace that keeps you challenged will get your heart rate up. Burpee variation number two is a burpee with a high pull. Now I'm going to use a kettlebell, but you can also use a dumbbell. Once again, I'm eliminating any type of jumping movement to keep it low impact, but high intensity. So, since the, my weight is going to be in front of me, I'm going to spread my feet apart just a little bit further. Place my hands on the mat, walk it back, walk it in. Then, at the, at the top of the burpee, boom, high pull. Either dumbbell or kettlebell comes right up the midline of your body. So, as you stand up to, to the top of the burpee, arms, elbows high, weight comes just under chin level, and repeat. Squat back down, set that weight down, palms on the mat. Walk it back, walk it in, feet are flat, boom. Boom. Perfect high pull. Heart rate gets elevated, it becomes intense. The third burpee variation. Oh yeah, this one. I'm gonna add a little kick to this one. So once again, eliminating any impact. Squat it down, walk it back, walk it in, stand up, kick. So those are just three different ways that you can do burpees that keep the intensity high but are zero impact. Cool, right? You do love burpees. Now out of the burpee variation that I showed you that first one, I'm going to extract one of those movements and show you that you can just do it as a move on its own. It's called a ground zero jump. So rather than a squat jump where you're actually coming off of the ground, you can get that same type of movement without leaving the ground, so therefore ground zero, but you're still moving your body through that similar movement pattern and getting your heart rate up. And it's gonna look like this. So as if you were to do a long jump, you get into that athletic stance as if you're gonna take off that way, except you're going to take off straight up onto your tiptoes. Yeah, to pause myself mid motion. Arms straight up, hips fully extended so you could squeeze your glutes. Bring it back down, chest is out, back is flat. Boom, 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 boom. Ground zero jump, zero impact, high intensity. Jumping jacks are a favorite, but for a lot of different reasons, impact, pressure on the bladder, they're not pleasurable for moms to do. So one variation that you can do to avoid that are the step out jacks. So low impact, you're still getting your hands over your head, stepping your legs out, working your glutes and inner thigh, or outer thigh, and your core engaged. And as you can see, it's elevating my heart rate because as I'm talking to you, you can notice that strain in my voice. You can do step out jacks instead of a jumping jack. Next move is an inchworm. This is going to help test and improve your flexibility as well as work your core and really work your arms and your chest. Inchworm looks like this. 
hinging over. If you need to bend your knees in order to place your hands on the mat, that's fine. Walk your palms out all the way to a push-up plank position. Now from here, you can do one of two things. You can either walk it back, you can stretch, you can come all the way up, you can even come up into a ground zero jump, or walk it out. Now from here, walk it in. Turn around and repeat. Inchworm, simple, high intensity. Now this next one is just marching in place. We're gonna add some movement with your upper body and your arms to help, once again, get that heart rate up. You're gonna be thinking about doing a high march so knees come up as high as you can. And at the same time, I want you to think about drawing a figure eight that is lying on its side. So if this is the middle, you're gonna be looping, 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 looping. As you do that, you are looping over the knee that comes up into a march. You can bend your arms slightly as you're drawing it. Ooh, see ya. And yeah, it's challenging your balance. And then you're getting your core involved by getting a standing on one leg at a time, practicing that balance on each leg, and because that arm motion, it's elevating your heart rate, you can make that move intense. Next up, swings or swing variations. I typically, my default, my go-to, my love, kettlebell swings. And if you are unsure of how to do swings, I have a variation that'll allow you to do swings with the right form if you wanna work your way up to doing kettlebell swings. But very quickly, swings are a hip hinging motion. It's very important. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make when they do swings. They're squatting and then lifting the weight with their arm. That's not at all properly the proper way to do it. It's a hip hinging motion because at the top of the swing, the force that allows the weight to come up to shoulder level is generated all back here. And that's because of that popping motion of your glutes, your hamstrings, your lower back, everything's getting involved and allowing to pop that weight up so you're not lifting with your arms. So it's important to practice that hip hinge to understand what that feels like, leading with your chest, nice flat back, soft bend in the knee, boom, squeezing the glutes. Nice, solid um, posture, no hyperextension of the lower back. When working with kettlebell swings, it's important that the weight is in front of you, not here. I like to talk about swings. Your very first swing should be as strong as the last swing. And starting here and trying to get momentum means you're starting off weak. You start strong. And you start strong by allowing the weight to be in front of you so you can hike it back. It hikes between your upper inner thighs, nothing below the knees, and you do hinge forward. This is not a, you don't try to keep an upright posture that'll hurt your lower back. It's that hinge pop. So this is what it looks like. And feet are about a little bit further than hip distance apart. I like to turn my toes out slightly. So from here, hike it, pop the hips. Notice the hinge motion, and also the squeezing, the popping of the glutes is what powers that weight up, and if you'll notice, I can let go of the weight. So my hands are not, pick, not my arms are not lifting this weight. The weight is being forced upward because of that, the power of your posterior chain, which is everything back here. So that's a kettlebell swing motion or movement pattern. Yes, you can do it with a dumbbell if you don't have a kettlebell and you wanna practice that. So I'd recommend starting the same way, grasping it, the head of the bell like that. So the same motion. The variation that you can use if you're trying to, to perfect the form of swings is called a skier swing. So similar to a ground zero, we go all the way up. You're gonna do that same movement pattern, but you stop here. So narrow stance means that you can't squat. It's really hard to squat when you're doing that. You are forced to do that hip hinge. And then you're focusing on that pop of the glutes. So the, your posterior chain is what pops that weight up. So holding on to two dumbbells. So weights go back. Just up to shoulder level, popping of the hips. One more variation of the swing movement that I want to show you. These are, this is a great move to have on hand 
when you travel. This is my go-to when, when we're going on our Disney cruise. This is coming with me. This is, uh, Dave the Bandman has a package where he can buy a la carte, but the band utility strap is a must because it allows you to, to fit into a door jam or to be looped around something that is sturdy and secure. So that way it saves the integrity of your band so you're not looping around something that's gonna break down the material. So what I'm gonna do is loop this through the railing. I've got the big, uh, big plastic part here which I'm going to then loop my red band around. And pull it tight so it stays secure. Now what I'm gonna do is step inside of my band and I'm gonna come forward as far as I need to that feels like a good resistance and it should feel like it's pulling me backwards. Now I'm gonna do the same hip hinging swing motion again, but this time I have to control the fact that I'm being pulled backwards as well as having to push forward against that resistance. So it's gonna look like this. Love this move. Low impact, it's gonna keep you challenged and it's portable. You can do it anywhere. Now the seventh move that I'm gonna show you is not something that everybody can do, but I want to give you another example of how you can be creative when it comes to your interval training moves to keep it low impact but high intensity. Like you'll see people flipping tires or taking sledgehammers or getting sandbags and throwing them around, medicine ball slams, anything like that that's not impact on your joints, especially your knees, you can do for an interval training move. One of the things I have here, in addition to the sled, which I'm not gonna pull out today, uh, are battle ropes. And these are big, thick, heavy ropes that you can just flip around. I'm gonna show you a couple different things I like to do. My rope is secured way over there with a 90 pound kettlebell, it's my husband's. But yeah, I use that too. So I'm gonna show you, let me make sure a good view of this. I'm gonna show you three different ways that I use the battle ropes. The first one is a slam that has a, a bit of a squat to it. So with all my might, I'm going to slam. So I've got that in there. I don't have to squat. I could stand like this and do it. So I feel like when I'm squatting with it, I have a lot more power. Another one, athletic stance, so knees are soft. You can do alternate. You can do crisscross. And that is all I'll show you for right now because I feel like I just went through a full interval training workout showing those moves. But there's a list of, set, well, you have more than seven ideas right there. When you go to craft up your interval training workout, I want you to think about choosing two moves that you'll do for your on that you rotate between an active recovery period if you have not yet experienced an interval training workout with me a full one that's coming this week too you're going to be invited to share a live interval training workout with me so you can get the feel for that and yes there'll be a replay for you too but that's a great start for you when you are designing your interval training workouts and knowing that you are not limited. You have so many options. And when it comes to interval training, this is all about your experience. What feels challenging to you right now today might not feel challenging two months down the road. So then you gotta go back to that toolbox and you gotta pull something out. Change up the formatting of the workout. Change up the active recovery. Find out what you can do to keep it challenging. It's always changing. And that's what's great about interval training. It's so dynamic. You can be so creative and have the most awesome, sweaty, metabolism boosting interval training workouts ever in your life. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this bonus video. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think and I'll see you soon for that live interval training workout.